Hi, this is Bethany Bray from the Methodology Center at Penn State, and I'm here to talk about a brief introduction to latent transition analysis. Let's start off by discussing the basic ideas underlying latent transition analysis, or LTA. So LTA is a longitudinal extension of latent class analysis, also called LCA, which we discussed in an earlier introductory video. LCA is a statistical technique that helps researchers identify hidden subgroups of individuals within a population. In LCA, the classes are static, but in LTA, the classes are dynamic, such that individuals can move from class to class over time. So in LTA, we are interested in understanding the ways in which people move over time between subgroups that we identified using LCA. Different individuals, of course, may take different pathways over time, and this is something that we're primarily interested in understanding. So let's think about LTA in the context of a motivating question. So let's start with a relatively straightforward question that we might want to ask in the context of quitting smoking. So let's think about when smokers try to quit, do they become more socially isolated over time? So we know that smokers exist within a social network that includes family, friends, co-workers, community members, and many others. But the characteristics of those networks vary from person to person. So for example, one person might have a small network, another one might have a large network. Within someone's network, the amount of support for quitting might be high or might be low. The person might be embedded in a network with many smokers or fewer smokers. So we know from previous research that depending on who comprises your network, you might have greater or lesser support for quitting. So in particular, partner smoking may decrease the odds of a smoker's successful quit attempt. Anecdotally from clinicians, we also know that many smokers, when they approach quitting, they fear the loss of friends. And so that is motivating our question of, given that social networks are complex and multidimensional, can we use LTA to understand when smokers try to quit, do they become more socially isolated? If you're particularly interested in this question or you wanna learn more about this example and technique, please see the paper that's listed on the screen that was published in Nicotine and Tobacco Research. So let's look at LTA in order to first describe subgroups of individuals post-quit with different types of social networks. And once we can understand those subgroups, then second, let's examine change over time in social network type. The current study used data from the Wisconsin Smokers Health Study. And it, this was a long-term smoking cessation trial in Madison and Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This particular analysis looked at 691 smokers who completed assessments at baseline and then at one, two, and three years post target quit date, also what we'll call here as post quit. This particular analysis is going to focus on transitions in smoker social, former smokers' social network statuses um, across that three year post quit date. This video is going to focus on transitions from time one to time two or one year post quit to two years post quit. So let's try to unpack what we did. The first step, of course, is to examine the types of social networks that exist among these smokers who are trying to quit. In this particular example, we used multiple characteristics of a social network to identify the types of networks present in our sample. So in general, there were a variety of questions that asked about um, network size in terms of how many people were actually in an individual's network. Um, we asked about whether new members were present at each wave of data collection. And then we also asked about the smoking behaviors of network members and the smoking behavior of a romantic partner if there was one. So across all of these dimensions, we actually created nine indicators that we used to identify the latent classes. Once we went through model selection, um, we 
selected a model that had five latent classes or five types of smokers social networks. And we talk a little bit more about LCA and model selection in our earlier video, video about LCA. But for now, because we're focusing on LTA, whose primary purpose is to look at transitions over time, let's just jump to the five classes that we identified in this study. The first class we called Immersed, and the Immersed class was characterized by extensive exposure to smoking via all routes except the romantic partner. The second class we called Low Smoking Expo Exposure, and those individuals were characterized by large social networks that had few smokers and little smoking exposure. The Smoking Partner class was characterized by exposure via romantic partner, but little other exposure within the network. The Isolated class was characterized by relatively small and unchanging networks with little exposure. And then the Distant Smoking Exposure class was characterized by smokers in the network, but not smoking buddies or a romantic partner who smokes. So once these classes were identified, um, we verified and confirmed that the classes were present at the other waves in our data collection protocol. So here again, we're talking about wave one, which is one year post quit and wave two, which is two years post quit. So when we think about these networks and we try to understand um, the social networks of these smokers who are trying to quit, one way to think about them is kind of in two segments. The immersed and low smoking exposure classes represented the two extremes in our smokers' social environments. So immersed had large networks with lots of smoking and smoking exposure. In contrast, low smoking exposure had few people in their networks. And then there were classes that ranged um, kind of in between in terms of their smoking exposure. So the smoking partner, isolated, and distant smoking exposure classes were characterized by particular aspects of smoking exposure and or network size. So let's see if we can start to understand LTA by starting to unpack what we call the transition probabilities, which represent how people transition between the classes over time. In this figure, what we're looking at along the x-axis are latent class memberships at wave one or one year post quit. So you'll see the latent classes that we just discussed, immersed, low smoking exposure, smoking partner, isolated, and distant smoking exposure. The colored bars represent the probabilities of individuals transitioning from a class at one year post quit to a class at two years post quit. As an example, let's look at the red bar under the immersed class. So what we see here is a probability of about 44%. What that means is that 44% of the individuals who were in the immersed class at one year post quit were also in the immersed class at two years post quit. In contrast, if we look at the purple bar under the immersed class, what you see is a probability of about 36 or 37%. What that means is that among all individuals in the immersed class at wave one, or one year post quit, about 36 or 37% of them transition to the distant smoking exposure class at two years post quit. All of the transition probabilities represented by the bars in the figures can be interpreted in a similar way but let's see if we can start to understand what they're telling us. The way that I like to start is by looking at the transition probabilities that I think of as being the stability parameters. So these represent the probability of remaining in the same class from at time two as you were in at time one. And what you can see is across all five of these classes, these stability parameters are relatively high. As another example, if you look at the low smoking exposure class at time one, you can see that almost 80% of the individuals in that class at one year post quit were also in that class at two years post quit. Once we start to understand the stability parameters, then I move on to a second question about who has transitioned. So although most of our participants stayed in the same class from one year to two years post quit, we did have some transitioning. Notably, in the immersed class, you'll see that 
people were almost as likely to transition to the distant smoking exposure class as they were to stay in the immersed class from one year to two years post quit. So if we look across all five classes at time one, what we see is that those who start in the immersed class and in the isolated class, they're the individuals who are most likely to transition. Again, most individuals don't transition, but if you start in immersed and isolated, you have the greatest chances of doing so. In contrast, those who start in the low smoking exposure when you're post quit were least likely to transition out of that class at time two or two years post quit. So let's see if we can start to understand the transitions a bit by looking at the immersed and isolated classes. So what you see if, is if in, an individual started in the immersed class at one year post quit, they had about a 44% chance, as I said earlier, of also being in the immersed class at two years post quit. But they were also very likely to transition to the distant smoking exposure class. Again, they had about a 36 or 37% chance of transitioning from immersed to distant smoking exposure. And then the next most likely class, although not very likely, was about nine or nine and a half percent were likely to transition from immersed to low smoking exposure. All of the transition probabilities, again, in this table can be in this figure can be interpreted in a similar way. But if you look across all five classes, what you see overall is that for individuals who did end up transitioning in their class membership, distant smoking exposure was quite a likely endpoint, as was low smoking exposure. So this is a kind of the first step in latent transition analysis. And if you're moving from latent class analysis into latent transition analysis, so from LCA to LTA, these are the kinds of additional questions that you can answer after you identify the classes. So were we able to answer the one simple question that we started with? Well, if you unpack the paper and you spend some time with that, you'll see that beyond just understanding how people transitioned, we also were able to learn how these different transitions were associated with um, abstinence over time. And so what we can see putting all of this together is that modeling multiple features of social networks simultaneously allow us to examine how multiple sources of smoking exposure um, work together holistically. And we, also, and we can also link transitions and class membership to other outcomes. So for example, um, what we found here is that if you have many sources of smoking exposure, or you have a single intimate exposure like a romantic partner, both of those may discourage abstinence. And those were the folks who were most likely to lapse back into smoking. In general, this study underscores the need for interventions that address partner smoking, but also may suggest new interventions to target broader social networks as people attempt to quit smoking. So we know that smoking cessation is related to transitions in larger social networks, but we also saw that these larger networks often include at least one new daily smoker. This is something that is unpacked more in the paper. And so these, this part of the study also supports further development of behavioral interventions to reduce exposure to smokers and smoking cues during quit attempts but also to help smokers with small networks engage in new social activities. Importantly for our um, clinician collaborators, what we found overall um, through latent transition analysis is that counselors may be able to use these results to reassure smokers that quitting tends to increase, not decrease the size of their social networks. So if you wanna learn more about latent transition analysis, or this paper, please visit the Methodology Center's website at methodology.psu.edu. Thanks.